okay so in the last leg of my lecture i am going to talk about the future of knowledge management when i am talking about future of management knowledge management we have to say that how knowledge management is going to evolve in the future what kind of changes is going to take place related to the architecture the knowledge management system how it is going to be influenced by people environment and the organizations because you know that we are going to live in environment which is going to be very very uncertain chaotic so what kind of knowledge management system would be required to cope with the challenges of the organization challenges of the people so that people can take better decisions and can deal with those problems which could be within code can be treated as wicked for which there is no solution for which the solutions are not in sight or for which there is no good solution that exists so how are going to deal with those wicked problems which has been created by the environment people or even the system because you don't find an alternative solution for those kind of problems or it is very difficult to get those solutions for certain problems right and that is where you have to say that how knowledge management system is to be evolved and developed in the future so that you can create better decisions and uh, the knowledge managers or managers can deal with such problems which may arise because of uncertainty chaos and competition which is going to happen in the future similarly you will also find lot of technological changes are happening so how they are going to change the knowledge management system its architecture not only that the name and how people are going to share their knowledge since we are moving from physical world to more virtual world it would be interesting to see that how knowledge management system is going to be developed in the future and the important issue related to the, to the future is that uh, security and safety of the knowledge man management and the corporate knowledge that exist with the organizations so you need to create systems and processes through which your system is going to be safe and people are able to access okay so a lot of problems are coming up where uh, you know that uh, technology not only helping in creating a system but also uh, helping in destructing the system so you need to identify those factors or uh, those uh, things which are destructive in nature and how you can uh, develop a robust knowledge management system uh, which is not only secure and safe for use but which is not going to be attacked by any kind of outsources for outsource uh, you know, side forces including technology so these are some of the issues that we are going to discuss in the future of knowledge management now to start with uh, one major uh, discussion that had taken place in the last leg was that yes when you are going to create uh, new knowledge it becomes a property of the organization and that is what we know as intellectual property so the intellectual property that is being created by the organization for the use of the organization is very very important so protecting these uh, uh, intellectual property is not only ethical and a legal issue but it is also a issue related to the technology right so if you look at uh, in uh, intellectual property it is defined as a result of any human intellectual process that has inherent value okay so any knowledge that is created by an organization becomes a part of intellectual property so it ultimately becomes a intellectual property it could be related to the organization or it could be related to the individual okay because when you are going to create a new product a new process a new system which is a part of the intellectual property you are being sponsored by the organization you are going to sponsor it yourself to create this new product and process in place so you have to see that how you have to protect this kind of intellectual property which is nothing else but a result of a process of an uh, intellectual process you can say by the people okay uh, these intellectual processes are the intellectual property may include a number of things it could be a design a new design it could be a new process or it could be a new invention new product or system or processes okay or even a, a new structure for the organization okay a new strategy or a new marketing plan a new program that you are going to develop for your computers a new algorithm any new uh, work that it could be a painting it could be music it could be a work a work of art okay so anything could be what you call a intellectual property so protecting these uh, intellectual property that is an outcome of a knowledge management system because you have been able to create and make new knowledge by using a knowledge management system or its repository becomes a very important issues right you know because, because there is a danger of duplication there is a danger of hacking okay 
and all kind of things and that is why it is very very important to look at this issue that how are we to pro protect and safeguard any new invention in related to any area right and that is why you need to see that how your systems processes structures strategies are going to be safe okay and others are not going to imitate and copy it now how are we going to see that it is protected and what are the possible dangers okay of losing our intellectual property okay the most important uh, danger is that when uh, there is a high implied turnover and people with good knowledge leave the organizations right so implied turnover is a major factor because of which uh, there is every possibility that employees uh, leaving the organizations take away the knowledge with them and because it is not available with the system right similarly sometimes you will find that yes there is a theft in the organization okay related to proprietary documents Pro proprietary documents are basically knowledge based documents okay uh, either by outsiders or uh, insiders you will you must have heard where there is a theft of the databases okay by the people or even the organizations okay who are going to compete with each other and that actually created certain problems for intellectual property okay and when you go for some kind of disclosure to the third parties okay without having a non disclosure agreement so it is a legal issues okay because you know that uh, there is a non disclosure agreement or there is could be a discl disclosure agreement where you are going to disclose certain things related to your product or process for example when you are coming out with a product you have to identify what are the ingredients in the product and it has to be on the package so that can be used by other people because uh, but if you it is protected by the intellectual property then probably you have better advantage because if they are going to use it they have to pay for it right so these are, there are lot of issues related to this like reverse engineering okay the way you have done something like you, uh, the others can also copy it or can make it in a different way that is very popular in the many uh, developing countries okay where they go for reverse engineering you have to use certain processes to create a product the same processes are also being used to create another product by them okay for example you have come out with a camera they can also create a mini camera something like that using the same processes okay so these kind of things are there then another important issue is security of the web portals okay most of the websites today are not very safe and the organizations have to install full proof security systems to ensure that whatever repository is available uh, with the organization is secure and there is no breach or unauthorized use of access to the proprietary documents sometimes you have systems with login passwords sometimes you have to get permissions from the organizations okay but even then uh, there are people or there are systems which can be used to uh, access uh, information from different websites which could be classified as confidential so you have to say that uh, you have systems uh, and measures in place so that this confidentiality is not breached okay your documents are safe and it is very very important because techno the way that technology is developed anything is possible and uh, similarly you know that uh, in cyber space uh, cyber crime uh, police try to intercept your mail telephones calls okay to catch thieves but it can also be used by hackers to identify or get knowledge from their competitors okay so suppose you are going to intercept mails okay or uh, phone calls or the conversations that is going on between two and you are going to tape it or record it which you can use it for your benefit so you have to ensure that the communication system that is there in place for knowledge sharing other things okay is not being used unethically or legally by other people okay then you will also find that sometimes your databases gets damaged okay so you need to go for proper encryption other kind of things so that your document is safe okay you also need to see that it is not going to be corrupted by outside forces okay. it is very very important because if the, the, the database is damaged or corrupted probably will not be able to make use of it okay or uh, sometimes you will also find that database is fed up with um, incorrect data or information knowledge by outsiders intentionally so that when you make use it okay you are not going to get any benefit out of it so you also need to secure and see that any data that is going to be fed into system is tested and verified by the knowledge managers before it is put it in the system okay so that you make sure that your the data that is there other in the repository are okay is not only safe and secure but it is also reliable and valid 
So, these are some of the issues uh, related to intellectual property which may create problems for the future. Okay. So, you have to see that what needs to be done, you need to go for non disclosure agreements. Okay. You make sure that you may, when you make contracts with your suppliers, vendors, others, you have a non disclosure agreement where so you are not going to disclose certain critical information okay, or knowledge. Uh, you go for patentings, you uh, have to have copyrights issues settled and then also when it comes to trade secrets you are not going to disclose any information. Okay. So, if you are able to go for these kind of things probably you will be in a much better position to see that your uh, intellectual property that is with the organization is safe and secure. And for that you make sure that when you are going to make any contract you have a non disclosure agreement where you are not going to disclose uh, information which is critical in nature. Then uh, if you have come out with any kind of uh, new products or uh, process uh, okay, which is which you think is uh, innovative which is not been done, done by others then you can file for a patent. And if, uh, if I can give you examples say for example, 3 m which is top and the high uh, uh, innovation index have the maximum patents. Okay. So, most of the companies file for patents for their products and processes and that is how they are able to save their intellectual properties. Similarly, you can uh, also go for registering your products with the register of the copyrights and that is how you have the copyright. So, if there is any unauthorized use of that content or material by anybody else without permission then there are legal issues involved in that. Well. Similarly, trade secrets, trade secrets are the basic the, the, the secrets will, uh, and are what you call the critical knowledge which is very very important for products and processes and this is make sure that it is not going to be shared widely. It is kept with minimum number of people okay. and at even at the same time we also have certain uh, safeguards to ensure that these trade secrets are not going to be revealed by people okay. and that is how we are going to save it. Okay. Now, since KM is going to be used for decision making process and to reap benefits and that is why most of the organizations have invested lot of money to create knowledge management systems. Okay. So, if you look at the develop, uh, development of a knowledge management system which started with management information system then move to decision support system and then you have a knowledge management system today. Okay. Uh, which is in which could be in the form of so what you call uh, say expert systems or what you call further development which has taken place in the name of what you call the artificial intelligence. Okay. So, whatever you call it you know that these kind of things have been uh, influenced by uh, philosophers okay, lot of philosophers and see that how we are going to take decisions and how explicit knowledge is going to be used for making decisions. Okay. Because you ultimately you need to be ra uh, rational in your decision making process, but at the same time you cannot ignore the fact that most of the decisions are bounded by rationalities okay. and at the same time a lot of insights and intuitive decision making also takes place. Okay. So, when you are going to take decisions you have to see that the extent to which uh, the decision making process is being contrib contributed by explicit knowledge and also tacit knowledge. So, we cannot deny the role of tacit knowledge also in the decision making process okay. and a uh, lot of philosophers they have worked in the process that when you are going to take decisions it is not only the technical aspect that is ma that matters, but also the human related aspects are equally important. Okay. So, you need to take care of this, this is a very important. So, both of them contribute and the important issue is that uh, whether you get the support or not. Okay. Support is very important issue in developing a knowledge management system. Okay. So, those who have developed knowledge man management systems are they have those who are creating solutions okay, use by using these knowledge management systems okay, are getting enough support from the system to enable them to come out with new products and systems or to take decisions which are going to be very, very effective. Okay. You know that we are going to work in a very competitive world and the competitive forces have actually compelled organizations to go for all, all kind of innovations. Okay. So, you have to say that uh, how this knowledge management system is going to affect various stakeholders not only employees, but also other stakeholders in the process managers, customers, suppliers and vendors and how they are going to react and how this knowledge management system is being used for taking decisions related to say vendor selection. It could be see that how you are going to develop a customer relationship management system or how are going to develop a human resource information system for managing employee better. So, all kind of decisions can be taken with the help of this uh, process. Now, when you are going to take decision you need to uh, adopt multiple perspective 
And when I am talking about multiple perspective, it means that technical any decision per se is not only technical in nature. It means that you do since you do not have all the information and the you know, amount of information may not be adequate. Okay, so the technical decisions cannot be taken always. So some element of human uh, say decisions are always involved, and that is where the personal and individual perspectives come into the picture. Okay, and any decision has to be taken not only based on technical knowledge or the amount of information, the quantum of information or the quality of information, but that is also supported by the individual judgment, his insight, his experience in these kind of things. And that is why we say that it is based on multiple perspective and that is very, very important. Similarly, when you are going to take a decision, you also look into the organizational and social perspective. Organizational perspective is that when you are going to take a decision you want to implement it, you also need to see that whether there is a support commitment from the top management or not in terms of resources, in terms of budget and these kind of things. Okay. A decision may be good, but it may not be implemented because organization may not, may not be in a position to afford it. Okay. So, you also need to look into the constraints in terms of time, space and resources from the organizational perspective while taking a particular decision. For example, when you are going to recruit people using a online system, you might end up with, end up with getting good people, okay. but the important issue is that how are going to whether they are going to stay back with your organization, how are going to retain them. Okay. So, the best person that is going to be recruited may not be a very good decision. So, you have to see that from the organizational perspective, what are the things that need to be done, so that a decision that is taken is going to be beneficial for the organization. Similarly, also need, need to look at the social perspective, how a decision is going to have in its impact on different stakeholders including employees, community and society in which you live. Okay. So, say for example, you want to go for a new product. So, whether this new product is going to be safe for the people, okay, but there are there any side effects of this uh, product, how whether it is going to affect the environment and the society. So, these are the social perspective that also need to be kept into the mind. Similarly, you also need to see ethical and aesthetic perspectives. Okay. Ethical perspective means when you are going to take decision, you have to see whether it is ethical. It may be in the interest of the organization, but at the same time when it may not be ethical. For example, you are going to advertise a product. Okay. So, sometimes you know that when uh, advertising happens, uh, the agencies or uh, the organizations may engage in certain unethical practices to promote the product, which may not be ethical in nature. Okay. Similarly, you also need to look into the aesthetic perspectives, okay. how the product looks, how, it, uh, how it, whether it is appealing in nature or not, what is the design factors and all, all kind of things. So, all these perspectives are very important, it is not only technical and personal perspectives, but you also need to see organizational, social and ethical perspective, which is very, very important when it comes to taking a decision based on the use of knowledge management system. Now, if you look at some of the emerging practices uh, in the field of knowledge management, which have of late have become very, very important and then we will see that how these uh, knowledge management practices which have emerged, emerged recently and have been able to help knowledge sharing and collaboration in a big way, because that has become a major issue uh, uh, in the coming future that knowledge sharing, knowledge holding, use of technology, ethical hacking. So, we have to see that how we can enhance knowledge sharing and collaboration along people when you are going to make use of. Uh, different kind of practices. So, there are certain practices that we are going to discuss is like web point two zero uh, and what is its role in knowledge management. We will also you see that how social networks, wikis and blogs, open source document communities, virtual worlds are going to be useful okay. uh, so far as knowledge management systems are concerned. Because if you look at these systems, they are very important with respect to knowledge sharing and collaboration. So, what we are going to discuss now is that how these knowledge practices, knowledge management practices actually help in knowledge sharing. Now, if you look at uh, the emergence of web 2.0, earlier we had web 1.0, now we have web 2.0 and then in future we are going to have web 3.0, which is going to be more advanced sophisticated system. Okay. Now, this web 2.0 was developed by Riley in 2000. Basically, the, which was basically related to development and evolution of web based communities and hosted services. Like you have social networking sites, video sharing sites, wikis, blogs and fox nomies. Okay. And the kind of technology that was used was AJAX, basically uh, JavaScript and XML, okay, which allows uh, web application to perform. Okay. 
like just like a desktop application. So, using these technologies basically uh, you can go for sharing okay, uh, at various ne social networking sites like Facebook okay, and other websites and video sharing like you have in YouTubes okay, and then you have also wikis, blogs okay, uh, which is connected through net and internet okay, and then Fox Nomis which is also connected to this. Okay. We created a group of uh, uh, people who are going to work for this kind of things. So, this uh, if you look at the emergence of 2.0 which is very very important okay. Uh, this basically the basic features of this uh, 2.0 is uh, it talks about collective intelligence. Okay. So, basically it comes from the users. So, any information that is being posted on the users on these uh, networking sites or sharing sites become a product for the website and they are going to make use of it to take certain decisions. Okay. So, it is very very important for that matter. Okay. Uh, so, there is lot of invent, investments have taken place like in, in the field of social networking sites or what you call the P 2 P networking that is peer to peer networking or even to provide better web services. Okay. Then you also have enterprise 1.0 plus 2.0. So, 1.0 is basically it is IT which is channel for distribution and platform for uh, viewing certain things and 2.0 is basically which provides tools, search link, authoring, tagging, signals and extensions. Okay. So, if you take the example of Facebook or LinkedIn, they are using 2.0 for different kind of activities like you can search, you can provide links, you can also write something over there, you can tag something or you can also extend your things right. And that is why this 2.0 is better than 1.0. Now, we will discuss some of these uh, um, the applications related to knowledge management and that is where social networking has come in a big way. Okay. Uh, it started in 2002 uh, basically when it, uh, uh, these social networking sites and that is where Friendster was coming there. Uh, so, this was the first networking site which was used by people and it allowed to use uh, basically use uh, users to share photos, videos, comments and messages from different friends. Okay. Similarly, <coughs> uh, there was another uh, uh, site came up which was known as who viewed me. Okay. It basically also grew based on the user relationship, but not via traditional marketing firm. and then uh, other things came up that was uh, MySpace, okay, uh, which was in place of friends, okay, which included uh, uh, certain features of Friendster and also added music uh, discovery, knowledge discovery. Okay. And if you look at this uh, social networking sites that is Friendster, it al aligned itself a channel for music distribution among idle and major recording level artists and it has a highest visited, uh, visited domain in 2006. Okay. Now, if you look at these social networking sites, the idea of having these social networking sites uh, was to share information okay. and this information could be in forms of um, audio, video, text and this kind of things okay. and that is where you can make friends, you can also add lot of things to it and that is why it could be used as a platform for knowledge sharing. Now, if you look at uh, social networking site and the way it has developed, now you have uh, uh, three major things that has come up into the picture like you have LinkedIn okay, uh, which is basically a professional net social network where uh, if you become a member then uh, you can have access to information about uh, other professional colleagues working in the same field or different fields. Okay. You can query questions, you can post jobs, you can post queries there also which could be answered by the professionals working in that field. Okay. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you look at the growth and development of LinkedIn, it has grown uh, uh, in a big way and uh, you know that LinkedIn is also generating lot of revenue. Though being a social networking site, it has reaped lot of benefits, lot of new knowledge being created okay, through posts and other kind of things. Uh, another uh, networking site which is known as Arcot, which is not very uh, uh, as you can say popular today, which uh, it is owned by Google. Okay. And basically, uh, most of the users belong to India and Brazil. Uh, I do not know how popular it is today, but uh, some people still might be using it. Then you have another uh, channel uh, or you can say social networking site, which is known as YouTube. Which YouTube uh, is a very popular uh, you can say networking site. Uh, it is owned by Google and uh, YouTube has lot of facilities. You can upload, share uh, or even provide comments on the videos. Okay. And that's, that is basically for audio and video. Okay. 
uh, sharing and you know that if you look at upload uh, you can if you look at uh, YouTube you can upload any kind of knowledge that you have or any kind of video the only thing is that you need to look at the copyright issues and other things. So, if you have a you have created a music you can upload it if you have a if I sang a song you can upload it ok or any kind of thing is being uploaded on the video. Now, if you look at the quantum quantum of information related to any field of knowledge on YouTube is it is huge ok and you will also find videos of courses lectures and other things. Uh, another interesting thing is that this course even this course is going to be uploaded on YouTube with where you can have access to the information and knowledge. So, uh, YouTube have be, has become a big platform you can say for sharing knowledge okay, for transforming knowledge. So, you, once you uh, watch a video on YouTube you get some kind of uh, explicit information in certain forms which, which you can internalize and then can make use of it for doing something right. And uh, you can find different kind of videos related to systems, processes, products in all fields of management not only management, but other fields also maybe engineering, science and law and that and most of the lectures are being uh, recorded and put on the uh, website uh, this YouTube for uh, the benefit of the users and you do not need to pay anything when you are going to make use of this YouTube for knowledge sharing ok it is most more or less free of cost ok because they are going to generate lot of revenue through advertisements and that is how it is being able to sustain it and it is a part of YouTube uh, the Google sorry. Now, the most important uh, development in the social networking has uh, happened today is basically the Facebook okay, which came in 2004. Okay. Basically, uh, 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 it is a new development that has taken place and you will find that this uh, Facebook is a replacement for photo directories. Okay. In Facebook, you not only interact face photographs, photographs, but you can also chat okay, and also can um, share information with people with your friends and colleagues right. Uh, the only uh, is uh, only option is that it is exclusive in the sense that in order to have access to the information the Facebook you need to be a member ok. You must join the network and you need uh, the artificialities like internet and other things to have access to this uh, Facebook system. Uh, and the important issue is that is yes, there are limit to the number of people and there are certain rules that need to be followed when you are going to make use of it because there is a moderator who monitors uh, the content and these kind of things okay. and there are security issues earlier it was there because uh, you know that Facebook was basically used by university uh, students from the universities across the world ok. But now you will find that Facebook is very very useful ok across geographies, schools, workplaces um, most of the people are using ok. And you can also provide news feed ok, uh, support stickness, uh, many repeat visits throughout the day. So, I mean Facebook have become a face of the young generation to know today not only to chat, but also interact share information and knowledge ok and all kind of thing and that is why this Facebook has become a very very important in social networking site. Even you know the companies are uh, posting advertisements and they also see that when they are going to recruit whether you have a profile in the Facebook what are what kind of people you are connected with ok. Uh, not only with Facebook, I mean the same applies to LinkedIn and other networking sites ok. So, uh, you know that most of the organizations see to it that you have a profile in LinkedIn or Facebook and what are the people, what kind of people you are connected with, what kind of things you are posting. So, the try to judge your behavior and other kind of things based on your profile and see that whether you are suitable for this kind of job or not. And that is why Facebook has become very, very important for this ok. Now, if you look at these uh, social networking sites, the idea of uh, using these social networking sites whether it is Facebook, whether it is a LinkedIn or YouTube is basically knowledge sharing ok. Knowledge which is held by people, organizations or information systems can be uploaded or downloaded can be used by this ok. And you can have uh, you can make friends, you can advise, you, you can have professional networks also. So, different kind of it also provide uh, different kind of networks. Okay. It has uh, it has its, uh, its, its strength in terms of reciprocity because you can interact and have dialogue with others and it is very intense also I mean you can have deep interactions or you can have shallow interactions. Then you have to look at the density that, the, uh, that is another important characteristics ok. You have to see the, what is the ratio of actual to possible ties in a network how many people are actually collected what they are doing and these kind of things 
and then you have to see what is your position in the network ok, how, how many pool are connected to what you do ok and whether your position is central or peripheral in the system ok and that is how we have found that social networking sites have been very very useful for sharing knowledge in the future ok, thank you.